A polygon is a closed two-dimensional figure that contains at least three sides, like a triangle. A convex polygon is a polygon where all inside angle measures are less than 180 degrees. So you can see here, this is an example of a polygon. It's a closed two-dimensional figure, and each of those angles is less than that 180 degree straight angle. A non-convex polygon, or a concave polygon, is one in which at least one inside angle measures more than 180 degrees. So you can see in my figure the green ones are still less than 180, but this purple or pink one is greater than 180 degrees. So it kind of looks like the one side has been pushed in toward the center. When we have a regular polygon, that's something like a stop sign or an octagon that you're probably familiar with. Each side length in here is equal, each angle measure is equal. So a regular polygon is when all sides and all angles are equal. This is also an octagon. It is an eight-sided figure, but clearly it's not a regular octagon because those sides and angles are not equal. We have a number of regular polygons here, and we're going to do a little bit of an investigation. So we're going to begin with one triangle. We know a triangle has three sides. We also know that the sum of all interior angles in a triangle add up to 180. Now, if this is a regular triangle, all sides and all angles are going to be equal. So if we take those 180 degrees inside the triangle, divide them up evenly amongst the three angles, that means that each angle in what is an equilateral triangle, if all sides are equal, is going to have a measure of 60 degrees. So each of these angles is 60 degrees. A square is a regular quadrilateral. We know it has four sides. Now, we also know, perhaps, that there are 360 degrees inside of a square. Now, I'm going to break this into triangles. So I'm going to start at one corner, and I'm going to draw a diagonal across to the other corner. So you can see that we've created two triangles, and we know that each triangle contains 180 80 degrees. So another way we can do this is we can say, okay, two triangles in here, multiply that by the 180 degrees that we know is within each triangle, and that's going to give us 360 degrees. So we can see, add up the two corners, and then these two corners and these two corners, that will give us the total amount of degrees in that triangle. In terms of each angle, well, we know it's 90 degrees, but we could also take the 360 degrees and divide that up evenly amongst those four angles because they're all equal. And that will show us that, in fact, each angle is going to have a measure of 90 degrees. Beginning at one vertex, we're going to draw diagonals to each of the other vertices. So you're going to see if I go to the next corner, that's just the side length. Likewise, if I go to this corner, that's just the side length. But I can go to this corner and this corner, creating three triangles. So we know there's 180 degrees in each triangle. If we multiply that by three, that's going to give us the total amount of degrees we have within a pentagon. And then if it's a regular pentagon, I can take that 540 degrees, divide it by the five angles because they're all equal. Equal, and I know that each angle within a pentagon is going to be 108 degrees. Now some people wonder why can't we break a pentagon into five triangles like this as opposed to the three? Well you can see that these three triangles include all angle measures the way I've drawn it originally. If we do it like this, we need those two, those two, those two, etc. Those are the ones making up the actual angle measures of the pentagon. The third angle in each of those triangles is not actually part of the angles of the pentagon. So if we want to do it like this, we can take those five triangles, multiply by 180, but then we need to remove these five center angles there, and we can see that's going to make 360 degrees. So we can take our 180 degrees times five triangles, we're going to remove those angles in the center, and that's going to give us the total amount of degrees within a pentagon. I've continued the process with my remaining pentagons, breaking them into triangles, knowing there's 180 degrees in each triangle, multiplying by the number of triangles that we can create within each polygon. That's going to give me the total number of degrees inside each of those figures. And then knowing that all of the angles are equal, regular polygons, we're then going to divide by the number of angles we have to get each angle measure. And we notice that there is a pattern here that occurs. Can we summarize this? So for any polygon, regardless of 
how many sides we happen to have, we can determine both the sum of the interior measures, so when we add up all of those inside angles, how many degrees will we get, as well as the measure of each interior angle. So the first thing I want you to notice is that the number of sides we have is always going to create two less triangles. And the reason is that if we start at any particular vertex and go to another vertex, those two side lengths happen to be part of the figure. So the number of triangles always is two less than the number of sides we happen to have in that figure. So if we have an n-sided polygon, we know we can create two less triangles from that. Once we know how many triangles we can draw within a polygon, we can multiply by the number of degrees within the triangle, and that's going to give us the total amount of angles within that figure. No matter how many sides we happen to have, so n minus 2 is going to be the side length, if I multiply that by 180 degrees, we can get the sum of the angles within inside that figure. In terms of each angle, we're going to then take the total amount of degrees within the figure, and if it's a regular polygon, we can divide it evenly amongst the number of angles we happen to have. So this is going to represent the total amount of degrees within that polygon, and we're going to divide it equally amongst all of our angles. This is a formula that we can use to get the total amount of degrees within any polygon. Figure out how many triangles can we create. It's always two less than the number of sides that we have and multiply by the number of degrees within a triangle. If we draw an irregular polygon, so not all sides and angles are equal measure, we can see that this is still going to work. So I've got 180 degrees, I can create the two triangles, which is two less than the number of sides I have, and I know that in a quadrilateral I will have a sum of 360 degrees on those interior angles. Now, if we add up each of these measures, and this isn't quite drawn to scale, we can see that in fact we're going to get the same amount. So in terms of the sum, that formula is going to work for all polygons, regular and irregular. The same thing does not happen when we're looking at each individual angle measure. The reason this formula works for regular polygons only is because we're taking the total amount of degrees and dividing evenly amongst all of those angles. If we have an irregular polygon, not all angles are equal, we can't just split it up evenly. So this formula works for all polygons to get the sum of the interior angles. This works only if we have a regular polygon to get each measure. Something else that occurs if we have a regular polygon is that if we add up all exterior angles we're going to end up with a sum of 360 degrees. So I'm going to take my triangle here. I know that each angle is 60 degrees because it happens to be an equilateral triangle. So let's maybe indicate that here. So I can get my exterior angle by extending each one of those sides and then I know if this is 60 degrees 180 minus 60 means that this is going to have a measure of 120 degrees. The same thing is going to happen on this side. So I know that this is going to be a 120 degree angle and then the same thing is also going to occur on this side where this is going to be 120 degrees as well. So when I add those up 120 degrees times 3 that's going to give me 360 degrees. The same thing happens with a square. So if I were to do my exterior angles I know that if my interior angle happens to be 90 degrees then my exterior also is going to be 90 degrees. Those are going to form straight angles. The same thing is going to occur on each of those corners, the exterior angles, so we're going to end up with 90 degrees times 4 is going to give us a total of 360 degrees, and that happens anytime we have a regular polygon. So in our first example, you want to be really clear, are we looking for the sum of the measures of the figure or are we looking for each measure? So in this particular case, we have a hexagon. So a hexagon has six sides and we're told it's a regular hexagon. All six sides and all six angles are the same. We need to determine the measure of each interior angle. So we're going to use the formula where we're going to take the total amount of degrees and divide by the number of angles, in this case is six. So then we can substitute that in there and then simplify and each angle is going to come out to be 120 degrees. In our next one we're looking for the sum of those interior measures and this doesn't matter if it's a regular polygon or an irregular polygon. The sum is going to be the same. So we're going to begin with that formula and then in this case n has a value of 9 so we're going to substitute 9 into the formula and then we're going to simplify and we can see that all together, we're going to end up with 1260 degrees in a nonagon. In this question, we're told that we have a regular polygon 
and each interior angle is 170 degrees. So we're going to begin with a formula that will allow us to solve for each interior angle. And then I know that it's 170 degrees, so I can actually go ahead and substitute this in. And we're looking for how many sides does this figure have? So I've got N is what we're trying to solve for. So now algebraically, if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to multiply by N first of all to get this off the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And then at the same time, we're gonna distribute to get rid of those brackets. Algebraically, move your terms to one side. So I subtracted the smaller coefficient from its like term, so that gives us 10n. And then I'm also going to move that negative 360 over so it becomes positive 360, divide out the leading coefficient, and we have a polygon with 36 sides. And then again, you can always substitute 36 back in and just check to make sure that each angle will come out to be 170 degrees. Sometimes you're going to have to determine missing angle measures where there's no original numbers given to you. And that typically occurs if we have a regular polygon. So we can see that we have a regular hexagon here. We also have two sets of parallel lines on this side. So because we have a regular polygon, we can start by figuring out what is the measure of each internal angle here. So I'm going to start with my formula and then I can see that because of that this C has to be 120 degrees because that's going to be that angle there. Likewise this will also be 120 degrees because it's one of those angles in the hexagon and then I can see that this line is parallel to this line. So these two angles are going to be supplementary. They're co-interior angles so together they have to add to 180. So that means D is going to be 60 degrees. So when you're given a figure and asked to determine missing angle measures and there's no original numbers given, it's going to be a regular polygon. You can use that formula to figure out what is each interior angle going to be and then from there use what you know about angle relationships to determine other values.